The environmental crisis of modern agriculture is rooted in a system that promotes monoculture and high input technologies. A way out of this crisis would be to design diversified cropping systems that mimic nature in terms of its function and structure. That is a system with high levels of biodiversity both above and below ground. The principles that guide such strategy would be based on the science of agroecology. The maximum benefits of biological diversity on farm is realized by farmers when crops, trees, livestock and other farm resources are assembled in several spatial and temporal designs. Throughout history, farmers have used diversity as a central feature of their farming systems. Today, many indigenous agricultural systems still survive and represent repositories of knowledge on how to produce a variety of crops using local resources and low input technologies. With these methods, farmers achieve yields in an ecologically efficient manner. Modern agriculture has moved away from this ecologically based approach to farming. Instead, it has become an extreme example of the artificialization of nature. Most agricultural systems today are characterized by large-scale monocultures that have been developed at the expense of natural ecosystem diversity. These systems, because they lack the biodiversity which characterizes natural ecosystems, require major chemical inputs to control pests and provide nutrients for crops. This high input agriculture has in turn led to several environmental problems ranging from pesticide pollution to soil erosion and elevated levels of nitrates in waterways due to the heavy application of synthetic fertilizers. One of the major ecological consequences associated with monocultures has been the intensification of pest problems. In response to pest population outbreaks, farmers have increased their use of pesticides, which in turn has led to the disappearance of beneficial insects and the increased resistance of pests to pesticides. In the U.S., the overall use of synthetic pesticides has risen from around 13 million kilograms in the 1940s to around 450 million in 1990. Nevertheless, over a third of the crop is still lost to pests and diseases, the same level of damage as 50 years ago. It's become a case of constantly escalating chemical warfare without a corresponding increase in yields. Despite the tremendous use of synthetic inputs, such as chemical fertilizers and pesticides, yields in modern agricultural systems are leveling off and even declining in some areas. Such yield declines are due to the steady erosion of the resource base due to unsustainable practices. So therefore, the expectation that increased production is going to come about because of an intensification of input use doesn't have an ecological basis. Recognizing the need to get off the pesticide treadmill, some farmers have turned to a system known as Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. IPM employs a variety of techniques, including monitoring of the crop to determine levels of the pest population, and spraying only when pest populations reach the threshold of economic damage to the crop. Some farmers use a variety of non-toxic means of controlling pest outbreaks, release of beneficial insects, including parasites and predators, spraying with microbial insecticides, or even attaching vacuums to their rigs to clear the crop of pests. IPM has enabled farmers to reduce pesticide use by emphasizing timely and selective applications. This in itself has allowed for the partial recovery of the beneficial fauna in many crops. With the rise of organic farming, commercial composting operations have sprang into existence, buoyed by farmers seeking a substitute for chemical fertilizers. This emphasis on agrochemical withdrawal is a step in the right direction as it promotes environmental quality and the health of those who work in and around the fields. And this shift has enabled farmers to meet the rising consumer demand for pesticide-free food. However, 
IPM and most organic farms are still operating within the context of large-scale monocultures dependent on expensive off-farm inputs, be they organically certified sprays, expensive machinery, or beneficial insects purchased from a commercial insectary. As a form of input substitution, this still does not address the underlying problem of conventional agriculture, its overly simplified field environment. Agroecology seeks to guide the transition towards low input systems and to redress the oversimplification of agricultural systems by moving away from monoculture and high input use and by designing diversified cropping systems that mimic natural ecosystems. The key is to design model farming systems based on ecological principles and provide high levels of biodiversity to the farming operation. The principles of agroecology can be applied at different scales, including urban farms. We are now in Albany, California, where you can see that urban gardens have utilized the principles of intercropping, using cover crops, and all kinds of diversification measures to provide the same ecological services that small farmers have utilized in developing countries. This urban farm combines about 25 different crop species in an area no more than one-eighth of an acre. These soils have been managed organically for many years. Because of that, the quality of the soil is very high. They have, they have a very good structure, good texture, high organic matter content, and also they have a very high biological activity. Given this, the systems do not depend on external inputs of fertilizers because the biological activity of the soil and the constant supply of organic matter provides the levels of nutrients that are necessary for an optimal soil fertility. Crops are planted continuously in this field, both for food and cover, throughout the entire year. The planting of legumes is an essential element in the design. These fava beans were planted in the winter to provide nitrogen for the soil. This leguminous cover crop was then plowed under in the spring before planting the crops and now is decomposing providing a constant supply of organic matter and nutrients. In addition to cover cropping, intercropping helps to generate important services in this garden. Plants have been placed next to one another in such a way that they'll help each other to grow and assist in control of pests. Upright basil can be interspersed with low, wide lettuce, for example, as can skinny onions. Given the structure of onions in terms of its canopy and rooting system, it's a very good plant to intercrop so that it doesn't use too much space and doesn't compete very heavily with associated crops. But in addition to that, onions and garlic have been universally used by organic farmers as a way of repelling insects. This plant produces strong odors that repel certain insects that otherwise would colonize these crops that are associated. Flowers, too, are incorporated into the mix here. Certain species of plants of the families Compositae and Umbelliferae are important because they attract beneficial insects. Not only because they have flowers that provide pollen and nectar, but also they have extra floral nectaries. And ladybugs, surfeit flies, and many other beneficial insects come to these plants, and then they move into the adjacent crops to control the pests. The trees and plants that grow around the edge of the field also provide a haven for predators and parasites that help control the populations of insect pests. The combined result of carefully placed crops, flowers in the garden, and perimeter vegetation can be seen in the healthy and abundant produce. We're examining the broccoli plants right now for aphids it is amazingly low, the levels of aphid infestations. Those colonies that have been established in broccoli plants show high levels of parasitization by the wasp that is the enemy of the aphids. And the brown mummies are parasitized aphids, and the hole that you see on the mummy is the exit of the parasite. Increasingly, scientists are recognizing the advantages of these diversified systems. Others, however, fear that they could lock agriculture into low levels of productivity. But evidence shows quite the contrary. 
in country after country, small farmers working anywhere from one half hectare to seven hectares are in fact producing more per unit of land than the large scale monocultures. By using the principles of agroecology, utilizing polycultures, cover cropping, and different techniques, they have achieved a highly diversified farming system through which they can obtain food security, some income generation, as well as a lot of ecological services. These same agroecological principles can be applied to commercial operations. Converting to sustainable agriculture in effect means redesigning agricultural systems to bring diversity back into the system so that it can sponsor its own fertility, its own pest regulation, and be productive without the need for massive external inputs. It is an idea that is gaining ground in the vineyards of Mendocino County, California. Years ago, entomologists discovered that prune trees planted next to vineyards can increase populations of anagrus, a parasitic wasp that attacks the leafhopper, a major pest of grapes. However, the effect of this biological control is confined to the rows near the prune trees as the wasp disperses only a few meters into the field. There's no benefit for most of the vines when the rest of the field is bare floor monoculture. To break the monoculture structure, farmers elsewhere are bringing greater diversity into their fields by planting winter and summer cover crops within the rows of vines. Here at Fetzer Vineyards, we're farming 350 acres that we own, all certified organic, and we uh, have leases on 180 other acres that we farm organically also. We rely very heavily on a cover cropping program that permits us to increase the amount of organic matter over time in soils and improve the humus content, improve the availability of the various nutrients that are critical to our endeavor. Here, the summer cover crop is a mixture of sunflower and buckwheat. It acts as an ecological turntable, activating different ecological processes in the system. All these ecological services enable the vineyard to achieve acceptable yields without the need for external inputs. One of the advantages of planting summer cover crops in vineyards is that they harbor a complex insect community composed of neutral insects that serve as food for beneficial insects, and then a host of predators and parasites which attack the pests of the vineyards. So in the sweep netting of the summer cover crops, we can observe coccinellids, ladybugs, lacewings, orius, and then many, many other insects that are just herbivores, neutral herbivores. These are very important, these little ones here. The spiders also. We feel spiders are our most important predator during the summer months. Spiders require some kind of cover to be able to move about and do their hunting. And so with a permanent cover cropping program like we use every other row in our vineyards, there's always a dormant layer of vegetation where they can feed. We would believe in our farming practices that diversity is an ultimate goal. We'd like to see more insects rather than less. We'd like to see more plant species rather than less. And we feel that that is an appropriate way to farm grapes in our area. Mi nombre es Horacio Ortega. Soy manager de esta viña aquí en Hapland, California. Tengo trabajando para esta compañía este, 12 años. Los primeros tres años de trabajo en esta compañía fueron uh, trabajando con químicos y, y después el resto de los años hemos trabajado, cambiamos a orgánico. Se aprende más porque hay que plantar muchas, muchas este, plantas que es necesario para, para atraer todos los insectos porque no podemos tirar químicos que pueden matar estos malos insectos. Estos buenos insectos ataquen a los malos insectos y no se vayan a la... Uh, to be a manager is not just to 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 spray or or this the 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 vineyard. It's just uh, just uh, an organic uh, operation. 
you have to know your your being or your plan like uh, like your children you know the cover crops provide such an abundance of food for many kinds of predators and parasites that getting them to move out of the cover crop and into the vines can be a problem here the mower works its way down the rows as it cuts the cover crop this forces the insects out and into the vines. This graph shows the level of infestation of the leafhopper pest on vines next to the cover crop prior to mowing. Once the crop was mowed, anagrus wasps and other predators, all enemies of the leafhopper, moved into the adjacent vines. A week later, the number of leafhoppers in those vines had declined. Two weeks later, the leafhopper decline was even more dramatic. Cover crops are just one way to bring biological diversity into the fields. Another innovative approach takes advantage of nearby wild vegetation. As with the urban farm, the forests surrounding the vineyards in Northern California are also important sources of beneficial insects to control grape pests. But in large fields, their effect is limited to the edge of the field. In this vineyard, a long strip of vegetation containing over 60 species of flowering plants, functions as a biological corridor along which beneficial insects can move out of the forest and into the center of the vineyard. A recent study demonstrated how this corridor amplified the area of biological control. Since this beneficial effect declined beyond 25 meters from the corridor, the next step in the agroecological conversion of this vineyard would be to establish additional corridors of flowering plants 50 or so meters apart. The process of agroecological conversion does not mean intensifying the use of external inputs. Rather, it involves a redesign of the farming system so as to intensify ecological interactions. During conversion, the scale of production has to be reduced or at least large-scale properties might have to be divided into smaller management units in order to intensify interactions. By manipulating the different elements of biodiversity to enhance positive synergies, we're basically restoring the ecological health of agricultural systems. They can now function without the chemical inputs that cause the environmental and human health problems associated with conventional agriculture. While equal to or surpassing conventional agriculture in terms of productivity, agroecological systems also promote the preservation of biodiversity, rural employment, environmental quality, and the viability of small farm agriculture. <laughs>